Hi all, happy Diwali to you and your family from Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to give the answers of the interview questions that we have talked in the previous shot. But before getting started, if you like my videos and I am able to help you out in any ways in Salesforce, please subscribe to my channel. So according to the first question, if you have multiple fields in your LWC form and you want all the data of your form should be inserted in Salesforce on the click of a button, how would you do it? So let's view how it would look like. So this is an auto draw. So let's say this is a form. This is an LWC component that we have already and there are multiple input fields. I'm going to use only two right now as my as you can see the screen is small and there is a submit button. I'm going to denote it as S. Okay. These are input button one. I'm going to name it as I1 and there is input but uh, input screen two that is known, named as I2. So let's say user going to insert all the data in ins input button input screen one and input two and on click of a button the data of this form should be submitted. That's what the requirement was. To solve this issue to answer this qu interview questions what we can do is we can denote this input box we usually denote it as lightning inputs right. We denote it as lightning. I don't know the exact syntax but this is how usually we do it. It, uh, there's a lightning input and there should let's say as we have only we have only two input boxes I'm going to denote it as two and there will be a lightning button right there will be lightning button and click on click of it uh, I'm going to call a handle click let's say <coughs> now inside this input box I'm going to keep something common inside this lightning input I can I have to keep something something common right so the one of the ways let's say this is an html file okay now as uh, i will move to the js file and inside js file i'm going to write my own handle click button and inside this handle click button what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this dot template dot query selector all now if you see one of the common thing inside all both of this lightning input is lightning input itself right we can get it using this lightning input Oops, I think so right and we are going to store it within a variable now once we have stored inside uh, all the lightning input values what usually going to happen is let's say this is a lightning input one and lightning input two right now what happens will uh, what will happen is when the user will click on this button handle click is going to work and on handle click what it's going to do is this dot template dot query selector all will get all the values that have been inserted inside this lightning input right all the values will be stored inside over here now if you have watched my previous videos we can loop over this value we can loop over this one by one right we can loop over this one by one event or something like this a record we can say it would be record we can uh, loop over this one by one what we'll do it will pull the data from each of this input box one by one and we're going to check whether we can name it as event if event dot uh, let's say dot type equals to let's say text then we will insert the value like or let's say if event dot uh, name let's say the lightning input name is let's say account name something like this we can do i will create a detailed video along with this but this is how, what you can do if event dot name equals to account name then we can insert event dot uh, event dot detail uh, equals to anything that we want like for an example salesforce in five minutes so automatically in this particular input box having the name as account name salesforce in five minutes will be inserted this is not the correct way i don't uh, remember the syntax but i will create a separate video for this how to take multiple values from an input box so this is how you can solve the uh, answer so the, the short answer to this question is what we can do is we inside the on the click of the button we are going to run this dot template dot query selector and we will find something common inside it and then we are going to loop over it and we are going to assign the value one by one by checking whether the name or either the class or something uh, like this so let's move to the next video
Uh, next uh, question that is if you have CPU time limit exceed error, how can you fix it? So first we have to understand why do we get this error? We get this error in two ways fun one of the synchronous process and one is asynchronous process Okay, synchronous process means in normal processes. Okay, if let's say your code is taking more than 10 seconds to process Okay, if you have written certain kind of logic and your code is taking more than 10 seconds to process you will get a cpu time limit exceeded error and in case of the asynchronous process if your process if your overall working takes more than 60 seconds okay overall your working of your code if it takes more than 60 seconds again then you will get the cpu time limited exceeded error so basically <clears throat> in the synchronous process the time limit is only 10 seconds and for asynchronous is 60 seconds now in order to solve the problem is you have to refine your code what do we mean by refining the code is we have to use lesser amount of queries you have to use lesser amount of for loops or you can say nested for loops you have to use lesser number of for loops next is the using maps and sets so the the best way to solve this problem is one to use more maps and sets okay second way is to use lesser nested for loop and uh, another is used uh, refine the query right you must refine the query you must only get those records that are necessary you don't need to get all the records either you have to use limits or either you have to write a where where clause should be written in a very uh, definite manner so that only those records that you want are received inside your variable and then you can you have to uh, loop lesser number of records and also if you use maps and sets you might not even need the loops right you might not need uh, the nested for loop the best way to solve the nested for loop error or the nested for loop uh, problem is to use maps and sets right so this is how you can uh, remove the cpu time limit exit error and another third way or the sorry the fourth way is if you are getting this error in synchronous process move your code to asynchronous right as we have already looked now our uh, if uh, in the synchronous process the time limit is around 10 seconds but in the case of asynchronous is 60 seconds so if your process is taking more than uh, let's say 10 seconds you if your code is not that important or it, if it is fine that it, if that code executes in future in that cases you can move your code to the asynchronous process so these are the four ways you can solve the issue of cpu time limit exceeded error next question is let's say you have an email template and you need to show all the email template name in picklist in a flow how could you do it so just to give you a view how it would look like this is your flow and this is how you should be able to see the all the email templates that are available in your sales flow now to do that let's move to the classic email template right i have a classic email template available over here as you can see there is a folder named as test email template i have created a new folder and in this folder i have added all the email templates so first thing first what i need to do is i need to get all the folder i need to get the folder first of all okay so if i go to my flow what i have done is i have tried to get the folder with the name as test email template now there is only one folder so i will use only the first record right and how to store the records i am storing it within a variable named as folder of email okay now i have received the folder sorry this is not the one yeah i have received the folder after receiving the folder i need to get all the email templates within this folder so next thing is i will use get records to get the email template based of the folder so i'm getting the email template using the folder id equals to that of the folder id that i've received in the previous get records now as we can see there will be multiple email templates that there won't be only one email template but there will be multiple email templates so hence i'm using all records and then i'm going to store it within a variable named as all email template now if i move to the all email template variable it's a collection variable as it's going to store multiple email templates hence i'm checking this checkbox allow multiple values i'm checking this so that it should be able to store all the multiple email templates now once i have received the email template i need to show it inside the pick list right so inside the pick list we can show the value using choice as we can see choice or we can say cho record choice set or choice sets we can so we can say we can show the values using inside the pick list now in order to show this i have created a new uh, all email choice set variable okay let's go through it 
this is a choice set variable collection choice set variable inside this collection choice set variable i have first passed all email templates that i have received from this previous get records in this previous get records all email templates for storing all the email templates within that folder the same email template variable i have passed as a collection inside this record uh, choice set variable and inside label as i need to show the names of the email template i am using choice label as name right i'm sure i'm choosing name as the choice label now once i click on this email template let's say i click on this email template i don't want the name right i want the record id because if i want to process it further i need the id of any kind of email template because the name of the email template can be the developer name would be different but name can be same same right so it will be very difficult for me to find out or even the salesforce to process the record if i use name so usually in order to process the record in salesforce we use ids so hence if i click on this any of the email template i need the id of that email template so hence for that purpose i have assigned data type and variable of like if i click on that any kind of email template i wanted the id hence i have used the choice value as id so once i have created this email choice set i have passed it to this pick list value so automatically all the email templates that i have received from that i am only fetching the name out of it using the email choice uh, collection choice set and i'm showing it on the screen and on the click of any of the email template i will automatically get the id of that particular email template and i pass this all email uh, like email uh, collection choice set to my pick list value hence i am able to see all the email templates that are available within this folder so this is how you can solve the problem of this uh, this this is the solution of this question so that's all for today uh, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel.